Hello, dear friends. Quite frequently, we get asked to talk about Da Hong Pao. So we've decided to mix business with pleasure and talk about Wu Shan Oolong teas in general, about what they are and the different types and so on. Right here we can see quite high cliff oolong tea bushes. They are classified into several kinds. You've got these frequently trimmed small bushes. And you've got the bushes that are left to grow high. They are called gao kong, tall bush. Also there are lao kong, the old bushes. These bushes are over 50 years old and they haven't been cut for the whole period. It's fair to say they are wild bushes. The distance between the bushes is also quite important. Usually there's about 30 centimeters of space between, but these bushes have a bit more space, about 50 centimeters. But the best way is to plant with three meters between the bushes, which is not quite the case here, but the distance is quite considerable, about a meter right there. I reckon these bushes are about 30 years old, maybe even more. They tend to grow about two and a half meters high. This is what you call a genuine Lao Kong, an old bush. The tea harvested from these bushes is highly valued for its taste and so on. Also, notice that these bushes are not treated with any pesticides or herbicides, which is why they're being bitten by insects. This is the reason that the raw material of these bushes is so highly valued. So what is an authentic cliff tea? The cliffs of Wuyi mountains are an amazing natural phenomena. In addition to all the beauty and bizarre terrain, these cliffs possess a unique mineral composition, which is a mixture of clay, stone, sand and soil. The cliffs of Wuyi Shan have this brown, reddish or grey colour to them. These mountains, being very old by the standards of geology, tend to face the natural process of erosion and destruction. The rains and mountain water wash the gravel, the clay and the soil down to the foot of the mountain. This unique soil composition is the very base for the authentic cliff tea. The gravel provides the tea bushes with a good amount of aeration. The microclimate and the fog of the cliffs provide the leaves with all the conditions they need to get the required elements and moisture. It's actually very humid out here. The higher you climb, the wetter it gets. The delicious fragrance of all the different plants is everywhere. You can even see the shape of the fog in the air. It is quite hot, although there is no sunlight at the moment and the temperature is not that high. Absolutely terrific location. An important aspect of distinguishing genuine Wu Shan Oolong tea is the location of the bushes relative to the cliffs. The tea that grows in the valley between the cliffs is considered to be the highest quality. The soil there is richer and thicker. But the planting area is quite limited. Zhen Yan Cha, the genuine cliff tea with an inimitable taste, is the one that grows in these locations. Most of the producers do not use these trimmed autumn leaves. They often end up being thrown away. But today, due to the high price of local tea, even this autumn harvest could be processed and end up simply being a cheaper variation of tea. In addition to the other qualities, this authentic cliff tea can be stored for a long period of time without losing its quality. What you see in this picture is an old 80s Te Luohan, which comes from one of the best Wui Shan technologists, Lao Shi Fu. In those days, Wui Shan Oolong tea packaging is quite similar to the one that is still preserved to this day in Chaozhou. Tea harvested in between a cliff and a plain is less valuable but not bad either. The rule of thumb is that the further away from the cliff the plantation is located, the lower quality the tea is considered to be. This tea is called half cliff tea, Ban Shan Cha. The least valuable Wei Shan tea is the tea that can't even be called cliff tea, Wai Shan Cha. This type of tea grows on the plains, hills and foothills. 15 to 80 kilometers away from the Wei Shan area. Notably, the vast majority of rare oolong teas are Ban Shan or Wai Shan. The reason for that is that most of the old plantations of cliff tea are Rugui and Shuizhan. 
whereas the newer plantations are those where farmers experiment and cultivate more contemporary types. As for Da Hong Pao itself, it's more of a regional brand rather than a certain type of tea. Moreover, there is an ongoing discussion on whether there was even a bush named Da Hong Pao. It's quite often that we chat with different technologists, famous producers and directors of the factories. And as soon as they realize that you're generally experienced in tea, they all say there is no such thing as Da Hong Pao. This means that the Da Hong Pao that is established in the market could rather be payday Da Hong Pao, which means mixed. It's a blend of several different types, like the famous Ru Gui in Shui Zhan, or it could be a blend of Beidou and Mei Zhan. Ru Gui alone is rarely used, so they could take Mei Zhan, Beidou or Ru Gui and name it Da Hong Pao because this name sells the best. The government regulates the use of this name, and only those producers who use authentic Wei Shan raw material are given permission to use this brand. Which is not a problem for producers from, say, Angxi, who could make fake Da Hong Pao using Tie Guan Yin, or Beng Shan Mao Cha, very poor quality. This is so-called Huang Pian Cha, low quality yellow leaves processed by those machines right there, basically bad condition. Here you can see some of this tea which fell out, but it's not bad actually. You could get one or two brews out of it. This tea is usually bought by European companies, where it ends up being a kind of high quality tea. There are dozens of tons of this tea all around Wei Shen manufacturers. So how do you identify an authentic cliff tea? It's actually quite simple. The key is your experience in tea tasting. First, you have to taste as many different types as you can. Your tea experience builds with regular degustations. Having tried genuine cliff tea several times, you won't be able to forget the unique inimitable taste of it, which is named Cliff Melody, Yan Yun, by the locals. In conclusion, I'd like to mention Da Hong Pao once more by saying that this micro-revelation, which is not even a revelation for Chinese people and for experienced tea lovers, does not mean that Da Hong Pao is a bad tea and you only have to buy original mono-sort tea, like Shui Zhan or Tie Luohan. The quality of a certain tea is the defining moment. So if a seller names his Da Hong Pao for commercial purposes, does not tell us about the low quality of this tea, although this might be the case too. So above all, just drink and taste the tea. The actual reason why you should pour the first brew of Chinese tea away has been hidden from everybody. Dust and pesticides are not the case. The real reason are those animals grazing among the legendary Wuyishan cliff tea bushes that is why you must pour the first brew of the local tea out. Enjoy your tea.